All right, welcome back. Monty and Miller here, and I just wanted to explain quizzes. We're calling them knowledge checks, and now that we're back in school and we've got these uh, cohorts, A and B cohorts, how about so that we can make sure that everybody's kind of learning at the same pace, we'll just do a quiz every other week, okay? So we've got a quiz this week, we'll take a quiz just before spring break, we'll take a couple in, what, April, you know, so that we can demonstrate. You can always retake, you can always just click the undo and, and improve your grade, we can give you different versions, okay? Now, we're all learning at a different pace, and I thought it would be cool if I post a video with the quiz on getting started. Okay, remember, the more work you show, the more credit we can give. So if you're confused right now, you've clicked on this video. We've been working on similarity. We've been working on corresponding parts. All right? So when we look at these problems... Tell me what you know. Cool. Well, the first thing is find the missing length. Find the missing length. Right there. Boom. Lots of different ways to get the problem. Excuse me, to get the answer. You pick. Okay. What I'm hoping is you show work. This 10 from the small triangle becomes the question mark or, okay, part of the whole. This 4 and the 12. Now, as the teacher, I'm going to do it a different way than some of the students. Okay? We know that this 8 is the short piece, and the 12 is the long piece. 8 goes to 12. But some of you might pause and say, wait a minute, Monty. 8 goes to 4. 8 goes to 4, then 10 goes to something, okay? You demonstrate how you see we can get to this problem, okay? The key to success is to remember what do you know. Think about, hmm, you know, one way to approach the problem. And then we got to ask questions. Well, on a quiz, it's tough to ask questions unless you look at your notes. As the teacher, I always learned it this way. I got the little triangle, and I got the big triangle. So as the teacher, I'm going to see a 10 and an 8, and I'm going to see parallel lines. Okay, so parallel lines. Uh, let's change colors there. Parallel lines. Parallel lines tells me that angle goes to that angle. So I've got one and one. And then the second one, the second one. And, yes, absolutely, this angle is mutual to both. We know that all three angles are equal. So we have similarity by the angle-angle rule. And 10, 8, and we have a 12 and a something here. So I'm going to put uh, a 12 here and then 10 plus X. So Monty's way is a little bit more confusing. Okay, so now it's up to you. I'm a left to right guy. You could go top to bottom. You pick how to set it up. So hopefully that was helpful for you to set up the proportion. Set up the ratio, okay, in order to solve this problem. All right, now, state if the triangles are similar. Hmm, if so, state how they're similar and complete the similarity statement. Show your work for partial credit. Okay, well, remember in class we wanted to find the corresponding parts. We want to find the corresponding parts. So it's your job to figure out what goes to what. NML. 
N M L N M L. So you got to use NML to create a similarity statement. What goes to what? Okay. So take your time. What do you remember? What do we think about? Are we rotating? Are we reflecting? What goes to what? Okay. All right. As the teacher, I always thought the short side to the short side. Okay. Then, once you've made all those corresponding relationships, set up the proportion. Set up the ratio. And then what is it we're finding? If they're equal, find if the scale factor are equal, congruent. All right? All right, and then you got to write it out. Okay, now just want to make sure that we can do a cross multiply and show this. Okay, so remember as you do this problem, it's going to have to distribute, right? So cross multiply and distribute. Okay, or Remember in class that day how we had the discussion and a couple of students discussed guess and check? Nothing wrong with that. If you have to, take one of these numbers, plug it in, see if it works. Cool. All right, then our last problem, this was the bisector rule, okay? And we discovered that the bisector rule, if you indeed bisect, then you create similar triangles. All right? Cool. So, bisector rule, we create similar triangles. So then we can write this out, right? So study this, study this, study this. The first thing I see, six, two, four, okay? So again, left to right, up and down. Some of you might already be looking at this and going, well, if four became an eight, then two becomes a, okay? So set up the proportion. Set up the ratio, right, for partial credit. So hopefully that was helpful. You, I want everybody to have a good weekend, but you're not done. There's more. Every time we take a quiz, I think it's really cool to learn about each other, okay? What is the hardest part of hybrid in-school learning so far? It'd be cool if you guys were to share what it is that you're struggling with. One-way halls. Eating in a chair instead of a table. Eating with a mask, right? Carrying a backpack with all those books. What is your biggest struggle? And then if you were king, queen for a day, and you wanted to change one thing about hybrid learning, what have you seen, experienced, what would that be? What's one thing that the principal could do to help the whole hybrid learning situation go better? All right? So, again, thank you. Don't forget, Friday, A cohort. Okay? And Pi Day, Monday, Tuesday, next week. All right? See ya.